Okay. What is your name? <coughs> Blake Miller. Do you have any nicknames? I have a couple. Uh, Preacher and Marlboro. What war or wars were you in? I served in Operation Iraqi Freedom, which was the first war, and I served in Operation Enduring Freedom, which was the second war. And what, how many, in what years did you serve in those wars? 2004 and 2005. What age did you go into war? Uh, I was 19 when I got to Iraq and turned 20 in Iraq. <coughs> what was your MOS in the war? Um, 0311, which is basic infantry, and my secondary was 8541, which was scouts. How many years were you involved in each war? Um, 2004, 2005. What was your rank in the wars? Corporal. Did you receive any awards or honors when you were involved with the Marine Corps? Several. Um, I have combat action ribbons. I have Navy Achievement Medals. Um, I have um, PUCs, Presidential Unit Citations. Uh, meritorious Mass, um, Humanitarian Aid, <coughs> Global War on Terrorism Medal, Global War on uh, Global War Expeditionary Medal, um, Sea Service. Um, there's a few of them. Did you suffer any injuries during or after the war? I was wounded a couple of times over there. Uh, three different incidents. I was in explosions. Um, and shortly after I got there, um, I caught a round in my flak jacket uh, and received a hairline fracture in one of my ribs. But it didn't come through my flak jacket, so uh, no blood, no foul. Do you have any stories that you would like to say? Uh, the worst thing that happened to me, uh, the worst pain I was in while I was there, was while we were in the Battle of Fallujah. And we were uh, providing what they called Angel Watch from the rooftops of the buildings um, for the infantry that was on the ground. And as they were bounding forward, <coughs> Um, we were trying to move from rooftop to rooftop to come online with them so they could bound farther, uh, farther, further. Um, and in the process, we were jumping from a tall rooftop to a shorter one, and a corner of it was shaded over with shadow, um, and there were mud bricks laying loose on that rooftop. And in the process of me jumping, um, I tripped on those mud bricks and my knee and one of the mud bricks come up and smacked my mouth and knocked out my front four teeth. Um, my front four teeth on the top are actually fake. Um, and when that happened, um, I could feel the nerves from the teeth like dangling on my bottom lip. And normally those nerves stay in your gums, but when I had smacked that, it had broke loose those bones in my gums and uh, that's what allowed the teeth to come out you know with the nerves attached to them and when they called the corpsman up he had to <coughs> shove the teeth back up in my gums um, because every time the wind would blow it was like a searing kind of pain like make you want to pee on yourself all over again and I, I did I, I peed all over myself when it happened um, I mean it was excruciating pain um, and even after they put the teeth back in, they had to cut the nerves off the uh, back side of my teeth because they were like twitching and dancing on my tongue. 
Um, and that was one of the first things that the Marine Corps done was fix those teeth and replace that. Where were you sent after each war? Um, I come home from the war and came back to Kentucky for uh, 30 days. Um, and then when I went back, I was attached to Fast Company, which uh, puts you on deployment status um, for 30 days. And it's what they call a QRF, which is a quick reaction force. So that means anything that uprises or happens anywhere in the world, you can be there in 24 hours or less. So you're on standby for 30 days, and then you're off of that standby for 60 days. That's the rotation. That's what I was doing. Life after the war or when you came home from war? Huh. Or now? Well, it was pretty interesting. <coughs> I was medically discharged. Um, I was considered a permanently disabled veteran at 21 years old. Um, I didn't have any income because I hadn't started drawing any disability at the time. Uh, and aside from finances, I was um, about, about as crazy as you could get at the time. Um, I didn't have any sane notions. I guess I was just sane enough to know I was on the verge of crazy. Um, who or what inspired you to be a Marine? That's actually a pretty crappy story. Um, my <coughs> grandfather um, was a Marine and he graduated boot camp in 53 and served in Korea. And he was part of the uh, Frozen Chosen ordeal. And long story short, his uh, mother was on her deathbed and um, he had applied for leave to go home and be with her um, after the war. And they hadn't got his paperwork together yet. So he went AWOL to go be with her because they had contacted him and told him she was literally dying. Uh, and he stayed with her until she died and, and until after she was buried. And then he came back. Um, now during a time of war, um, if you're gone for more than 30 days, you're considered a deserter, which means you can be sentenced to death because that's treason. Uh, if you come back before that 30 days, you're considered what they called AWOL, which is unauthorized absence. Uh, you were somewhere you wasn't supposed to be. And when he come back, uh, he got into a fight and lost rank. They stripped him of uh, his medals and give him a dishonorable discharge. And I was 10 years old when my daddy told me that story. And I was always proud of my grandfather's service. And when my father told me that story, I took it as a stain on my family's name. And I made my dad a promise when I was 10 years old that if I grew up to see it, I would serve in the Marine Corps and I would get an honorable discharge and clear my family's name. <coughs> How did you become known as the Marlboro Marine? Um, we were on a rooftop um, and a squad of Marines that had come under that building um, had come back into it. Um, just to get out of harm's way and in the process they um, had a Los Angeles Times photographer following with him um, and he come running up the stairs to the rooftop and it's normal practice to uh, you know signal other Marines around you to let them know that you're uh, coming to and from um, 
just to give them a heads up. Um, and when we all heard footsteps, we all immediately turned and aimed at him. And when we saw that he was wearing the blue flak jacket and the blue Kevlar, we knew that, you know, he obviously wasn't a Iraqi. <coughs> so um, rounds started coming in on the rooftop and I kicked his legs out from under him and he fell. And then he went crawling to the uh, to the side of the, the roof top, uh, top there, uh, the little wall around it. And after we had called up a tank to bring that down, it, uh, it stopped. Um, everything got real quiet and he snapped that picture. And I didn't know nothing about it at the time and didn't find out for like days later. Okay, um, I guess that's it. Thank you.